Hello, welcome to my channel where the guides for post-processing apps. Today we are inside Darktable. Alright, so we are going to process this image on the Darktable 3.6.1. Uh, that's the latest release. They are working on 3.7 and 3.8, so it's going to be exciting to see what the developers brings out in the future here. Now, Darktable is open source and free software, meaning that you don't have to spend money to get this fantastic post-processing app. You simply go to their homepage and download it. It works for Linux, Windows, and Mac, and there's no difference between those versions. So whatever you get in Windows, you also get in Mac. All right, so I'm using what the developers call a scene preferred workflow. This basically means that uh, whenever I double click a photo and it loads up the photo, it's using some determined presets and it's analyzing the image for a scene referred workflow now you can set your workflow type under the settings and go to processing and you can change auto apply pixel workflow defaults to scene referred some people like to use display referred but i like the scene referred the most especially since i'm shooting a lot of landscape photos and i've actually also changed the auto apply chromatic adaptation defaults to modern another thing you should know about scene referred workflow is that we have a module preset for that available so usually it's on default here and then you have a ton of modules and some of those modules aren't actually compatible with the scene referred workflow or they are compatible but uh, you shouldn't use them because then you can actually break your image uh, that sounds weird that you can actually break your image but uh, let's say destroy it <laughs> in a way so I always enable the workflow scene referred. Now, as you can see in the history stack here, it's loaded up 13 settings and that's the default settings. Now, every photo software does that. So it's nothing special for Darktable. It's only that Darktable, the developers want you to actually see what's happened inside the history stack. Okay. So whenever you load up an image, you can always see the modules that are activated in this little place where it says show only active modules. So whenever you use another module, it will end up in this list. Now, I think that's it. So we can just start processing this photo, but I'm going to, but I'm going to minimize the modules. So something like this. Now you can see better what I'm doing. I'm just going to increase the width of this one like that. All right. So I guess the first thing we should deal with is the exposure. So I could change this, but I don't want to because this is what the software analyzed. So I'm going to create a new instance. So I'm right clicking here and I'm going to change this one instead so I'm going up on the exposure to yeah somewhere around here now it's starting to look fine uh, we can go up to the filmic and tweak some more and that's what we are going to do so I'm going to set the white point and I'm going to set the black point and we can check if it's starting to clip by activating the clipping warning tool and it's not clipping yet so that's good so let's create some more contrast and i think it's a bit too much 
and push in some more blacks here. All right, so we have created a black point and a white point. I'm not sure, but you might hear my washing machine in the background. I'm sorry about that. Now we can introduce some more uh, contrast if we want to. Then just head to look and just bring up the contrast a bit there to something like this. Now it is a bit dark still, so I'm going to up the exposure just a bit more. Okay, so I should have started with this maybe, but uh, if you want to change the white balance, don't use this module. Uh, it's not recommended to change this at all. Uh, this is the software that have analyzed the white balance and try to set it correctly. The developers want you to use color calibration instead. So we can head in there and I can hit this droplet tool and hopefully it picks up the right white balance for this photo. And I actually think it did. So this is before and this is after. Now let's go into the base tab. Under the base tab we have a few more modules. I'm going to activate local contrast. So it should start to look a bit too much contrasty and it does. But I'm going to use a preset called clarity and that helped a lot. Now I'm not sure that I really like uh, where we are at. I can see that it's not turning out. Uh... Now, this is a golden hour shot and it doesn't particularly look like golden hour. <laughs> it looks kind of flat in the colors, but we can change that if we want to. Uh, we can also choose to compress uh, the shadows and highlights. Yes can clearly see what that does so if I deactivate it and activate it again but I don't really like what it does but we can try another preset for example soft and that turns out to be a bit better let's see without no I actually like the more contrasty look here so we are done in the base uh, tab let's move to the color tab now color balance RGB is a really powerful module and let's just get started inside it. I want to raise the global vibrance quite a bit to somewhere around there. I can actually tweak the contrast as well to somewhere around there. Now global chroma, chroma is uh, changing or <laughs> think saturation except that Chroma doesn't really change the brightness of your image. So let's try some more colors here. And let's up the shadows, the midtones. I'm going crazy in the midtones here. And the highlights as well. So somewhere around there. And we can push the global saturation. It's uh, pretty obvious what that does. And we have so little color in this photo that uh, pushing the global saturation this much isn't all that bad actually. So I want to push it in the shadows. I want to push it in the midtones. And it's starting to look more like a golden hour shot. Uh, let's see and push it in the highlights. And I'm just going to deactivate the clipping warning. I don't care about that right now. So perceptual brilliance grading. Uh, it's basically brightness. So if I want to go down on the highlights, I can do so here as well. So we can create some contrast here. So let's say I want to go in the shadows and down in the mid tones I can do so that creates a bit more contrast and I can of course go up on the mid tones and down on the shadows 
And that actually works a bit better, in my opinion. I can also go up globally. So you can see I'm lifting the brightness on the entire image. And I can go down. And I'm actually going to go down. So this little module here is excellent for creating some more contrast and especially and especially color contrast so this is where we started you can see that there's so little colors here and this is where we are at right now and i actually think that for this demonstration i'm going up on the global saturation even more so yeah i think that's good now we can go into the correction module and this is where we can uh, activate lens uh, correction, chromatic aberration, and stuff like that. I want to activate lens correction and denoise profile, and maybe haze removal. Haze removal is great for bringing in more contrast. And it's actually a bit dark now, so let's go back to the color balance RGB and go up on the global. to something like that now this is starting to look quite over processed but i want to keep it like that because uh, it will be more obvious to, to to you what's going on in this software here yeah i think that's fine actually i think uh, this image is almost done right now we can go for the correct module again see if there's anything more we need to do here so i'm going to activate chromatic aberrations so usually you want to activate denoise and use the profile module uh, this works truly excellent i have never needed to change this i have changed the settings inside here so i'm just using the default the lens correction you need to enable that usually uh, the chromatic aberration just enable that and ha haze removal if you want to bring out more contrast if you don't like to bring out more contrast using the haze removal you can of course use uh, other modules here for example bring out more contrast in the filmic rgb module okay finally effects so this is where you can set for example a vignette i wouldn't set a vignette for this image actually uh, but you can and i'll just show you how to do it so let's activate this now in this case we can go and tweak the scale so now i can for example do this and pull that out just a bit somewhere around there and move it down and we need to feather this uh, vignette a lot do something like this now this uh, vignetting tool it actually removes the saturation it starts removing from here and outside here it removes a lot of uh, saturation so if you don't want it to remove saturation simply drag the slider up and in this case i want to drag it up so this is where we are at right now i think it's nice with that wingnet uh, it's a bit too much over in this corner but i could do a gradient here and lift that corner that wouldn't be a problem let's check without the vignette and this is with the vignette so i'm not going to use a vignette now it looks uh yeah it doesn't look right for this image so let's just disable the vignette and we can do the contrast equalizer if we want uh, for example some bloom we can activate the clarity preset which uh, obviously does a lot of clarity now this is of course too strong for this image uh, there's different ways you can uh, adjust that 
For example, you can go into draw on parametric masks and go down on the opacity. And it's not as heavy as it was. Go down even more to around there. And this is before and this is after. So it kind of works. Let's go up just a bit again so we can see more of a difference. So this is before and this is after. Okay, so I think that's it for this image. We can take a look at where we started. So we started here. Let's take a snapshot. And let's go up to contrast equalizer and take a snapshot. And at the left side is where we started. And at the right side is where we ended up. So it is a bit overprocessed. I have to be honest, but I kind of like it. Uh, it gives me something to work with inside Darktable. So yeah, Darktable is in my opinion a really, really excellent tool. And I uh, am actually considering moving over to Darktable. I like it so much. It's free and I will get updates for life and uh, if i'm only using darktable i can go over to my favorite operating system which is linux so that will be really amazing for me anyway i still have stuff to learn inside darktable darktable is really advanced and uh, you have so much stuff you can do in darktable and it's a steep learning curve, but there are some really good uh, YouTube videos out there. So if you search for, for example, Bruce and Darktable, you will probably find this Australian guy that uh, does really technical guides for Darktable. And those guides are really excellent, but you should start with uh, episodes where it's uh, dealing with dark table 3.6 which is the version we are in right now okay so i didn't show spot removal but that's pretty basic it works just as it does in any other software and it does a really excellent job uh, you can even merge hdr files inside dark table but uh, i haven't really touched that yet because i've moved away from hdr photos i'm not doing that as much anymore if you like this video hit that like button and if you want to watch more from me hit that uh, subscribe button and if you want to please make a comment uh, uh, telling me what you think about dark table if it looks interesting for you uh, thanks for watching and i hope to see you again goodbye mm -hmm.